Let's continue our discussion on common dimensionality reduction technique. By the end of this topic, you will be able to explain and implement the low variance removal technique. Previously, we discussed missing value ratio technique of dimensionality reduction. Now, let's turn our attention towards the technique of low variance removal. Before we define it, let's consider the salary prediction example which we have seen before. We have a lot of independent variables here. Now consider a situation where the company is established in India. Now I want to ask you a question. Do you think the independent variable country will contribute any information or the predictive power of the model? No. Why? Because every employee will have the country column as India. As this column contains the same value for every person, it contributes no information about the salary. In predictive modeling, we often try to eliminate the independent variables, which do not vary much across different observations, or technically speaking, have very low variance since they do not contribute to the predictive power of the model. As a result, the country column does not contribute to the predictive power of our model and thus we can remove it. Now let's try to use the concept of a low variance filter in our housing prices dataset. For this, we start by raw housing prices 3.csv and import it using pandas and we will be calling it data as always. Now we write data.info function which will print the data type of every independent variable. In the output, we can clearly see the categorical variables as object data type. But there are also other independent variables which are not of type object but should still be considered as categorical variables. Can you identify them? Now our next step is to isolate all the numerical columns. For this, we define a new data frame as numerical underscore data. We drop all the columns from the data which are not categorical and stored in the numerical data. Next, we will normalize all the numerical columns. As we have studied before that, variance is scale dependent. Now let me ask you a question. We can also use the standard scalar instead of the normalizer. I want you to pause the video and think for a few seconds as to why we are not using standard scalar. We do not use the standard scalar in this case because it changes the variance to 1 and that defeats our aim. We will not be able to compare the variance of the respective independent variables if they are equal. So let's skim through the code. We start by importing the normalizer from the sklearn preprocessing module create its instance and use the fit underscore transform method over the numerical data. We store the final result in the norm underscore data. On running the norm underscore data dot head function, we can clearly see the normalized values. Now the next step is to analyze the variance of the columns that we have normalized. For this, we use the norm underscore data dot var function and store it in TMP for future. Now our next task is to determine the minimum threshold of the variance. Variables with variance less than that threshold will be eliminated. Now just like the missing value ratio, choosing a variance threshold is a very debatable aspect and should be chosen wisely. For the sake of demonstrations, we will choose it to be e raised to the power minus 4, which is equal to 0 0.0001. We can spot that there are few variables like number of bathrooms, number of bedrooms, which have variance less than the threshold value. But rather than removing them one by one, let's automate this process. 
For this, let's first define the threshold value as capital T. Now we define a loop which will traverse through each value of the variance store in TMP and each variance value is compared with the threshold. If the variance value is less than the threshold, we drop that value from the norm underscore data. On printing the output, we can clearly see that there is no variance value less than 0 0.0001. This is a simple trick, but it can be risky sometimes as there is no good convention as to what value should be chosen as the minimum threshold. On choosing a wrong threshold value, we can miss out on some important information which can be conveyed by the eliminated variable. This is how we apply a low variance filter on numerical variables. But if you remember in the salary example earlier, when we talked about removing the country variable, that was a categorical variable. And for categorical variables, we follow a slightly different approach. For categorical variables, we simply use the value counts function and look at the frequency of distinct categories. If any of the distinct categories is having a very high frequency, let's say over 95%, then that categorical variable has low variance in terms of different categories and hence can be considered for elimination. The last technique that we would discuss in this topic for dimensionality reduction is the elimination of independent variables with high correlation between them, which we have already seen a few times by now. We have already discussed in the assumptions of the linear regression that elimination of independent variables based on high correlation is not a reliable technique because it only looks at one-on-one -on -one correlation and hence we use the concept of variable inflation factor or VIF for the same which looks at things at an aggregate level. In case you have forgotten VIF and how it is implemented, you can revisit the VIF in module 5. In the next topic, we will look at some advanced techniques for dimensionality reduction. See you then.